Please be aware, this will be a spoiler-filled discussion. Hello, and welcome to the Minority Arts Appreciation Society, where we're ticking all the boxes and providing the much-needed minority perspective in popular internet discourse. I'm Matty, and I lead the film discussions. I'm Josh, and I lead the music discussions. If you are new to our channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please do um, and like our videos. It really helps us out. And you can follow us on our social media as well, at Arts Minority on Twitter and at Minority Arts Podcast on Instagram. And today in our older film review, we're going to be talking about Kim Ji Woon's uh, 2010 uh, thriller, I Saw the Devil. Um, Probably, I mean, if you're going to watch this movie slash listen to this podcast, probably just a quick content warning for like descriptions of murder and extreme violence. Oh, and, and sexual violence as well. Yeah. Uh, this is a brutal, brutal film uh, yeah. that, that really holds no, holds no punches. Um, so be warned. Yeah, I, I said to Matty before we recorded, this is quite the Duma recording night. So, uh, incredibly bad feelings following up <laughs> discussing this film. So, like, if you don't want to feel bad feelings, yeah, check out. That said, um, this, like, regardless of my actual opinion on this film and, like, its themes aside, just the, the premise of this film is, is very much up my street. And I, I, I don't know what that says about me, uh, mm. but I don't want to stay on it for too long. Um, but one thing I would like to address and talk about and celebrate is the sort of new wave of Korean cinema. Um, this is definitely nowadays, especially this year, getting a lot of well-deserved attention. Uh, but I, I think I, I don't want to sound like kind of like a Westerner just being like, oh, wow, those... Those people over there, they've really cracked it, good for them kind of thing in a patronizing way, but because they've been doing this for years, for years, they, the fucking mastery they have over drama is incredible. All of these directors, uh, in, including Kim Ji-Woon and uh, Bong Joon-ho and Park Chan-wook, all of these directors have this wonderful niche of storytelling um, and every time I watch one of these films, whether it be The Handmaiden uh, or Parasite, which I didn't, I didn't, me and Josh didn't love as much as everyone else, but even even the worlds of these films are always so much fun to visit. Yeah, I think what's well, interesting for me, well, I uh, we're very um, cautious to not dip into like Orientalism, like I'm yeah. sure there's like really shitty Korean films out there. Um, that we just don't hear about because they're not Korean, right? Like, you, you only hear about the good stuff because that's what has crossover appeal to other countries, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but, like, what's weird for me is I've always felt, like... Um, so, in my head, there is, like, foreign films and then, like, not foreign films. And mm -hmm. this is, like, very much from, you know, for the first 12 years of your life, you pretty much watch, film, watch films on TV that mostly English or American. And then at some point you're like, oh, there are like foreign language films, you know, when you're like a teenager. And there's a clear like line in your head, right? Mm -hmm. And as a teenager, I always felt like Japanese films never felt foreign because like an I was reading to anime. That's so interesting. Japanese yeah. storytelling was very familiar to me because I was so into anime. So I never felt foreign and then the same with like korean films for some reason um i for me like um korean films have always been like weirdly big in my life even as someone who isn't i don't consider myself like a cinephile who goes out my way but it was just like films like when i was growing up old boy and i thought the devil uh were films that i watched alongside like kill bill mm. and um <laughs> violent teenage boy films and <laughs> and it's interesting i just find it really interesting to me because that um it took a bit later for me to like get turned to like russian cinema like yeah and things like that but like as a 14 year old uh korean v revenge 
films were like all the range. Like, so I don't know. I just thought I was curious, I guess. I think it's really interesting how our barriers break down as we get older. I think like this is, it's absolutely very obviously due to our raising in the West where we're kind of brought up with the idea that our culture is the dominant culture mm. and kind of everything else is like this imitation. Um, I guess, so I guess in, in movies terms, like that would be Hollywood is like the place that makes films mm. and um, places around the world that also make films are like, doing the film thing but they're just doing it as much as they can um yeah in the shadow of hollywood and yeah like as we get older i think it's really interesting that we kind of are the breakdown of our perception towards national barriers of film mm. comes as a result of just seeing films as like independent works of art mm. rather than like as a a product of a wider society obviously every nothing exists in a vacuum and mm. we should always discuss things in their context but i think it's a wonderful thing and a thing every person who is like quote unquote into films should go through of just respecting a film's integrity first i think i think to sort of like give another perspective on that is um i do think like countries the normal like the kind of like basically mainstream films in a country have a sort of rhythm to them mm -hmm. and so like a mainstream american film has a sort of rhythm to it that's quite very familiar and kind of like recurs in lots of films and some and, and i think the same way about I, I consider i saw the devil to be a mainstream korean film like yeah big, big budget big cast um and it has like a rhythm to it that feels feels very like familiar to me and like easy to get into in terms of like i'm used to this kind of film um and 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 you know same with anime anime has got a rhythm like when you watch a ghibli film it's just got like a rhythm to it that if you're i completely if, agree if you, were, if you were raised on ghibli films it just makes sense to you but like i didn't really watch like say russian films until i got to uni right uh, stuff like Tarkovsky and it was really weird at first because it was like a different rhythm right like mm -hmm. it's really quiet there's like barely any music um people don't talk as much and it's like it's very it was it was awkward to get into a new rhythm yeah. of like language of cinema right um so yeah that's another thing I think is interesting just how different countries have a rhythm like French films have a real rhythm to them that like I find easy to get into and then and then like Italian films are completely different. Like each country can has a, a rhythm, I guess, from the lineage of cinema in that place. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you. I think what I would point out is I think the reason for that is because we're raised and like on I don't just mean us in the generation that we were brought up, but I think everyone is brought up with this idea of a, a hegemonic idea of movies are this and very much being the hollywood model and the national barriers we perceive to show that are really just different ways of filmmaking that differ from the hollywood model because i think like especially like while you have within those movements different directors um and like different auteurs with different ideas of what filmmaking are in the same way that you have that within america um yeah and it's just different ways of making films and i yeah. i think i think you're definitely right it's a it's a it's a playoff between the two because just di people make movies differently but it would be you know kind of facetious to deny that certain regions make films in like have, have a tendency to make films in a certain rhythm yeah and i wonder if that's why um korean vi violent korean films get really popular in, in the west as, as i do i do think they have a similar rhythm to a hollywood absolutely film. very yeah. bombastic soundtracks opera operatic 
um, kind of set pieces and you know uh, fun action films. Like yeah, it, 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 it's a, it, yeah, and that, I guess as a teenager that was like very um, it's very appealing, familiar to me. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, yeah. I think it's time to move on to our discussion of I Saw the Devil to give a plot synopsis before we delve into our opinions. The film starts with the brutal, brutal murder of Ju Yeon uh, as we see her husband, um, Kim Soo Hyun, come to terms with her murder and essentially begin the hunt for Kyung Chul, played by... Choi Min Sik of Old Boy fame, which was a mindfuck to see here. Anyway, um, what follows is Kim Soo Hyun's uh, descent while he tracks down the killer and essentially tortures him for his crimes against humanity. Um, Josh, I'm going to start off with you this time, seeing as you have actually seen this before, as you just mentioned. What did you think? Or What's your history with um, I Saw the Devil and what have you come to think of it now? So before I give my history, why did you pick this film out of curiosity? I really wanted to talk about um, Korean cinema recently and Kim Ji-Woon was a director that I hadn't seen talked about nearly as much as people like Park Chan-wook and Bong Bong Joon-ho. Not that it was like a contrarian or like pick or anything, but I wanted to, when I, when I have directors like that, I want to watch their films and I want to see perhaps why they're not talked about in the same way as these other directors. Uh, I always find it really interesting contrasting directors against each other and their works. Um, in, in hindsight, not just because of the violent elements of this film, but I can see why he wouldn't be up there in this, it's celebrated in the same way that those directors are, not because of a lack of talent, but just because of different ways of presenting films and different topics. And also, the premise massively appealed to me. I, okay. I thought this sounded like a really enjoyable, entertaining film. Okay, I was just curious. So I saw The Devil. So, so my history of this film is essentially, um, as you... The premise of this film was a shoe in for me at like, I think I was 14. Mm. Um, I was a really huge fan of a podcast called uh, Yeah, It's That Bad, which um, if you go back, I don't think all of it's aged super well. <laughs> um, but <laughs> when I was 14, I was a fan of the podcast. And they talked about this film. And I remember they said there was a scene in this film where um, someone's uh, balls got crushed by a wrench and, and they like <laughs> zoom in on the boxer shorts as it's um, slamming the wrench. And and I was I was like that sounds awesome. I <laughs> I want to see that film, so I watched it. Fourteen that... year old Josh was a simpler time. <laughs> yeah, and well, I think this gets to my larger point is um, this film very much like at that age appealed to kind of um, I think we still have this in us now, but like a sensationalist kind of I want to see cool violence in films 14 year old male brain in the same way that Kill Bill which I saw around this time and Old Boy which I saw around that age Mm. uh, really appealed to so that was like the context of watching this film and back then I remember I liked it but I was a bit disappointed because I was comparing it to Old Boy the whole time (laughs) Old old Boy was one of my favourite films it still is Mm-hmm. Um, and like I, when I was fourteen, I was watching this, and I was like, "Yeah, it was pretty cool when the dude's balls got crushed, but it wasn't it wasn't as good as old boy." Um, <laughs> and I was surprised the balls get crushed like twenty minutes in because I remember I got to the that ball crushing scene. I was like, "Damn, already? What are we gonna do yeah. for the next, next two hours?" Anyway, um, um, I, when watching this, I I I got worried because I know of your distaste for procedurals, mm. and I thought it was gonna slip into being a procedural drama. And the film really throws that away after the first, like, (laughs) half an hour, and it it really wastes no time. Yeah, but I think coming to it now, I was very aware that when I first watched this, it was genuinely, it was was a fun, simple action film. Hmm. Uh, What I wanted to watch, a sad, angry man, go and get revenge (laughs) on other angry man. 
and and that's just what films like this are like. Mm-hmm. And, and coming at this now, I was trying to reevaluate that attitude towards films and from the perspective of a man myself uh <laughs> reconsider like how <laughs> i don't know what you think about this film but reconsider maybe how women sometimes are used as props in entertainment to like motivate men to do cool violent things um yeah. and and i felt this time <clears throat> watching this film um some of my old criticisms that I had when I was 14. For example, I didn't find uh, Kim Soo Hyun mm. as interesting as the protagonist of Old Boy. Um, when I was 14, I was like, damn, 20 minutes and he's already crushing boars. Like, I wanted to see a slow descent. Um, <laughs> and I felt that way again. Um, I do think there's lots of like boilerplate revenge film stuff in this film. Uh, um, and But yeah, while I think the action is still very exhilarating again mm. i do think films like this are kind of like pornos in a way where people talk for 10 minutes and it's like okay they're talking and then oh yeah never action scene finally <laughs> uh but in this <laughs> film um sometimes the talking ends you're like oh we're gonna get to more tension and then it's like really horrible and we really the content warning so everything's you know fair game so if you're still here you know, yeah, it's all fair game. Uh, yeah, it was like okay, so now I'm watching it and uh, the third rape scene. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I felt really uncomfortable. And, yeah, yeah, I think this time watching it, um, I still really love the action, it appeals to the 14 year old brain of mine. But yeah. The 20 year old brain was trying to reevaluate how do we use women in films like this, made by men, about men, you know. Uh, is this okay? Um, so I still had loads of loads of fun with this film. I'm just trying to explain how my perspective was a bit different. I can no, yeah, I completely see where you're coming from. I suspected um, coming into this discussion that actually your biggest gripe with the film would probably be its treatment of women. And as the woman of the podcast, I'm in an awkward position where I completely agree. And. <laughs> And the stuff with sexual assault is kind of iffy, but I profoundly enjoyed this entire film <laughs> and <laughs> had a great time watching it. And it's mm. like, <laughs> my brain doesn't really know what to do with itself. I, I was consistently gripped and like, in, I just, I think it's how everything is presented. I think everything is presented with this flair and this kind of um, lackadaisical attitude that it, that is really quite charming, and so you're just constantly like in the in the film. The film was constantly winning me over. My my brain was going, I have an issue with this. Not just morally, but I might be like, I have an issue with this narrative beat. I have an issue with how this character is dealing with this thing. But, like, my my stupid animal 14-year-old brain was going, God, I'm having a great time. <laughs> okay, can, I, can, I, can I propose something? Yeah. Can we start off with a slightly serious discussion about gender in male-driven action films? Yeah. And then move on to how cool this film is. <laughs> and just establish that there is a problem, but also talk about how, how cool fucking is. awesome this yeah. movie is yeah is that okay i i i'm exceedingly happy with that framework yeah so so i think for me my issue with this one was a tonal one so um rape in pulp b movies is mm. not serious and and if you'd watch like a rob zombie film or something mm. uh it rape is generally the language of these are scum people and and that's what they do yeah <laughs> um, yeah and in pulpy b movies rape and violence are like interchangeable and especially like exploitation movies rape is fun like it's it's meant to be titillating and um part of the horror part yeah. of the like roller coaster ride of horror. yes pop popcorn you know mm-hmm. and, and 
I don't know if our attitude towards that needs to change. Um, probably should. I'm just saying in B movies, in explicit like I completely agree. Low budget B movies, it's slightly more palatable because they're in such a fantasy land. It's so goofy and dumb that everything becomes fast. And maybe we should readjust our attitudes there. But it's slightly more palatable in a B movie, um, like dumb cheesy horror films. Um, yeah, here uh, it's really weird because it's. I think it kind of uses rape in the same way where rape is always there as like an exciting thing and it motivates the men and it shows how twisted the men are it's never ever ever about the woman's pain like mm -hmm. it's all about how it hurts how rape hurts men and like you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah and and it's hard in this film because it is in my opinion this is a boilerplate fun revenge film and it's, mm -hmm. it's presented it's being presented in a very serious way but it isn't prepared to have serious discussions about things like rape. So it was really weird for me. If it was on the beats, like the main character walks into a, a nurse getting raped. Yeah. And uh, says, after beating up Kyung Chul, as part of like some male fantasy about saving women from rape, mm -hmm. uh, he, he calls the nurses, hey, don't go. I need you to operate on him. And it's like, you, you want her to operate on the man who just like <laughs> assaulted her? Like maybe get a different uh, medical person. <laughs> yeah. And it, there's a clear disregard. There's no thought as to how he no, feel. No. And that was like, as a guy watching this, I was just very keenly aware of like that's problematic. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. I I would definitely agree with you. My biggest problem with it is that if you're going to include these elements as part of your story, they need to be centered to be frank, and they need to have explicit narrative consequences that wouldn't be there if sexual assault and rape wasn't there. So what I mean by that is if mm. there wasn't sexual assault involved in the story of this film, the story would remain the same. And that's mm. a huge problem because it means that when there is rape in this film, it means that there are no female characters for you to get attached to um and it this is you know the sexual assault exclusively happens to female characters um mm. and it means that we never examine the implications of rape the causes of rape um and it really is just being used as a plot device and if you're going to have that like you know rape isn't the only topic like this but issues as serious as that if you are going to can put them in your film then they simply are too important not to discuss mm. and so yeah that is my biggest problem with this film is that it it has absolutely no deconstruction of this in fact the only women in the film are either murdered or victims of sexual assault <laughs> and it's it really, like, really is that bad. I think it would be really interesting to see Pulpy, a wave of Pulpy be violent, f fun films from a uh, woman. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, for so long in cinema, which has been very male-dominated, rape and violence go hand in hand as the things that show you a character is bad. Mm -hmm. And they're part of the fun of the experience of just it adds to the gritty in this film rape is used to add to the gritty environment and show you how psychopathic the character is yeah and it's it's the flavor it's it's flavor and color it's not really a discussion point very explicitly as well like in the moment where yeah they sh i was surprised that i forgot how much they show yeah it was crazy. yeah yeah that too and it, the film i mean the film is very bold about how it is using sexual assault to make mm. the whole thing more theatrical. Mm. Like in the scene before he, um, when he goes to see his serial killer friend after, after he's beaten him up and he's in hospital and he's like, Oh, um, he, he basically says that he like raped his wife before he would have raped his wife before he killed her. Yeah. And it's, it purely in that scene, it is like to, it, the film is literally just 
employing it as a raise the <laughs> oh my god yeah. it's so horrible kind of thing it's yeah it's, it's, it's about how it makes him feel not yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah and that's the thing is it's always yeah. the, the consequences of it are always male-centered did you see old boy <laughs> I haven't seen Old Boy, no. Okay, I won't spoil Old Boy. One of my favorite films. Yeah, I, I do think interestingly that is in these these films are copping my mind because I watch them at a similar time. And they're both uh, mm. same genre and same lead actor. <laughs> um, yeah, but but that film I think has a uh, loads of um, grotesque sexual stuff mm-hmm. that feels very justified and like this is what the film is about and it helps you it's very like it helps you understand characters psychologies why they're doing what they're doing and that film is still very pulpy and funny and like violent and fun like it's yeah i can't overstate how fun old boy is yeah i'm so excited to watch it because it just looks like a good time sexual stuff in it is completely tapped but Mm -hmm. it it doesn't really feel as exploitative and it feels more this is intrinsic to the characters. It's not just like man angry because wife raped. It's like man deep, like how this fucking psycho psychologically would fuck someone up. Like the sex stuff that happens in that film. So I do think there's a way to do it and have good poppy fun while also being a bit more thoughtful about it. It's just a shame that this film didn't do it. Definitely. It is, it is hard to watch when you know, when you when you have that kind of thing in the back of your mind yeah. you know it does it does it does hurt your enjoyment because as like you're watching it you you don't you don't even have to have the specific director in mind because i think ultimately i think it's quite good to separate films from their directors um mm. in most cases um and just experience the film as its own set of intentions mm. um and when you have things like that in the film it kind of compromises it as an as its own entity and it's quite painful yeah and my last thing i'll say on the matter is um i don't think old boy by park chan wook is perfect i do think there's problematic gender stuff i was just saying i'm happy the sex stuff is part of the plot and then like really yeah and, and also um as a <clears throat> as a man who is attracted to women watching this film there are very confusing tonal moments where the key scene for me, what was very confusing for me, is was um you know the part where the, the villain of the film, um Kyung Chu, is staying at like his murder friend's house, and there's like a woman there, and she's very attractive, and he starts like sexually assaulting her in a violent way, and then she gets into it and is like enjoying it, and I was watching that scene like, is this meant to be hot? Yeah. Am I meant to be aroused? And and stuff like that, like I didn't That was an iffy scene. I really didn't it know. Was really weird. Yeah. But I guess we've covered it at depth um in, in the mm-hmm. you know. So that, that's all I have to say on it. That's yeah, it. me too. Now, that all of that said, <laughs> this is one of the coolest films I've ever seen. And the story of man been wronged goes on to torture <laughs> man is fucking awesome when me and my friends realized that this was just going to be a awful human being being tortured for his sins by a guy who is fucking awesome the, the protagonist is so cool we were so excited and the film absolutely delivers on that premise it is so gripping and exciting just being like oh superhero kim soo hyun is gonna come fuck his shit up now what's he gonna do this time it is so much fun he's sort of like batman yes. every, every time he beats up the villain he lets them get away so that he can find them and beat them up again so i yeah. guess he's exactly like batman but um yeah i i agree with you like this is an exceedingly cool film I think it's a weird one for me because I think it's a very shallow film where when people are talking, for the most part, I kind of just turned off because it's not that interesting, the conversations. The, yeah. the main character is 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 very, very, very simplistic. Like Totally. You don't even get 
a moment of him like okay the most he got was at the beginning when he singing to her in the toilet i thought that was very that was sweet lovely yeah. and then after that he is angry man who can't process grief and is angry and like <laughs> doesn't even talk I... really he's just a spectrum of yeah and it is like it's pulpy and fun mm-hmm. i'm just saying it does feel a bit empty but it is very like pulpy and fun i yeah. I agree with you to an extent. I think, like, I get some stuff out of it, excuse me, on a narrative level, mm. where I think the beginning of the film, after his wife's murder and before he goes on his rampage, is mm. gorgeous. I There's some beautiful shots um, it's when uh, him and his fiance's father are on a bench grieving together and his his sort of father-in-law just sort of breaks down into his arms. And I, I do think there is some, like, really, really good catharsis in mm. this film. I think, I think Lee, Lee Byung-hoon gives an incredible performance. Defo. I, I think the script is very thin in, ca- in giving him strong characterization. Like, but he, the way he cries without moving his face. Yeah. And the way his, oh, that final scene... And his body's just contorting as yeah. he's like screaming in agony. Like he gives an amazing. He gives this character a lot more, much more warmth and depth than I think the the script. The script does has at hand, and and yeah, I agree. Like, actor did an incredible job. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I, the shots here can't be downplayed either. Oh, it's beautifully shot. It's yeah, beautifully shot. yeah. Yeah. There's something about the way that this film looks just on a sheer level that mm. is so attractive to me. Yeah. I think it's this, it's a com in a lot of scenes for me, it's a combination of naturalistic and very bombastic lighting that really gives this film mm. a very like seedy feeling, but also at the same time is very pleasant to look at. It's wonderful. Yeah, no, it's super austere and stylish and vivid. And like, it's tough because there's like, political brain and then there's like yeah aesthetic brain where there are <laughs> there are shots of of naked women who have been brutalized in this film that look gorgeous there's a mm. shot of his wife in the body bag from above which is so it's so beautiful there's a shot of her being dragged in the snow in the red trail of blood oh my god yeah gorgeous. blood on snow shots are yeah. always amazing as well as and it's just really like and there's moments of like that where you're like, it's doing interesting stuff where like making horribly violent actions look beautiful. Like, mm. for example, um, my favorite shot in the film, um, when he's stabbing the dudes in the car and the camera's just <laughs> panning around and he's just repeatedly, and it's got this amazing line of like, you say it's a lucky day, but it ain't lucky for you, buddy. And yeah. he starts stabbing them and the camera's <laughs> panning around and it's just repeated. <laughs> It's stabbing so and i felt like i felt uh, i don't know how you felt i felt like adrenalized and like yeah. pumped and like super like yes yeah, stab them like felt, <laughs> you know in doom when you do a glory kill yeah it was the same feeling i was like so almost like titillated by the violence in the film at points where like the it's just so lush and gorgeous yeah. and like i wow i love how this film is shot it really it's fucking incredible. <laughs> I think it shows wonderful restraint in points as well during like murder scenes. One thing that really caught me off guard was just the like really casual execution, <laughs> pardon the pun, of the guillotine scene. Not the not the final scene. Oh yeah. Um but the first when he scene. the first one he's so nonchalant about it mm. and i think this film does a wonderful job of like character building with how with how they move yeah. i think like every every person in this film has such a physicality to them i really like it when films utilize human bodies in interesting ways and i think this film does that exceptionally well because everyone in this film it, it, their character is almost developed developed by how they execute their violence, and it's mm. amazing. I, what you said about uh, Choi Min Six uh, nonchalance in his the way he performs that in the execution scene again is another example of the actors, in my opinion, bringing more to the characters than maybe the script 
would have suggested mm. uh, in terms of like I love how Choi Min Seek um, is so like in the beginning of the film when he's like killing these random women so visibly bored <laughs> yeah he's like doing. He's, he's been doing and, it for so long yeah and the only time where he seems to be genuinely having fun and like is happy is when he realizes he's being hunted and he's just like fucking with Kim, you know, Kim Si Hyung. That's like, so true. And, like at the end, he's grinning a lot more. At the end, he's like really in it. He loves torturing this guy who's obsessed yeah. with him. And like the there's a read of this film where they are in a weird way like perfect for each other, like in a mm-hmm. Batman Joker way. I don't know why I got so many Batman vibes. But like, um, I think it's I. I honestly was like, yeah, fucking. Even for the the protagonist, this could be like a Joker origin story mm. because of the way it's like hard to tell if he's laughing or crying at the end of the film. Yeah, I just yeah. There's it feels like yeah the cat and mouse game. It's just very, it feels very, it's tonally quite harsh, but. Uh, just how much fun the villain is having in this film. Uh, and watching him become this monster is, is very... Uh, there's, there's a camaraderie there. It's yeah, weird... <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird, like, brotherly relationship. Hmm. Um, uh, sort of like our... This isn't going to be a recurring, you know, episodely thing, but sort of like our Freddy... Um, uh, our Nightmare on Elm Street discussions, I want to do our favourite... I want to give do our. I want us to each say our favorite Kim Soo Hyun does something fucking awesome moment. Um, and I like to start off. So, uh, in the scene um, where he's like infiltrating the house where he's staying with his murder friend, Choi Min Sik's character finds a shotgun, and there is a moment where uh, Kim Soo Hyun is hiding around a corner, and he. And uh, Choi Min Sik goes to reload, and he runs around the corner, and and the frame rate like slows down, and it kind of goes slow motion, and he does like a roundhouse kick and like fucking <laughs> kicks the gun so it misses as he shoots, and mm. it's oh, it's so cool, it's so cool. Mm. I many cool moments to pick from. I I think I'll go. I'll go over the the big one. I love um, the ending, uh, where he's oh yeah, orchestrated the villain's death um, by attaching his like mouth to. He's got a guillotine set up, right? Where if the door opens, the guillotine falls, and the only way to stop the guillotine from falling is if the villain holds this rope in his mouth. Um, so he's and and if he's called his family to come to open the door for the villain, so his family would effectively kill the villain, right? And mm. the villain has to live with knowing, not live, but die. In final, <laughs> final moment, knowing that like his son <laughs> watched his head roll on the ground. But my favorite thing about that kill is it's so like well orchestrated. It's a very good revenge plot. That is a lot of suffering um, to do to someone. Yeah. But him walking away miserable. Putting in earphones to hear the death yeah. and then crying in the night. It's a, it's a very Doomer, like Reddit guy attitude, <laughs> I think. You know, putting in earphones to listen to sounds of death and then and then crying. I think For sure. it was very, it's cool how like his final badass moment was just like not subverted, but just very like moody and kind of like brooding Low key in that way. Well. Like there was no pleasure in it because you know he's a man and he can't process grief. Uh like it was, <laughs> a, it was a very cool moment. But up there are you know him uh cutting off the uh heel <laughs> of like he oh, took the knife. Oh, no, I actually that is the only part of the film I couldn't look at. I loved how they did I I, I looked very intently. I was really into <laughs> how it slowly goes in. Um, it looks so painful, and and and, and I love uh, him tying up the other dude and being like he- arms, legs, head. Right, that's the order that you said you were going to torture the person. Or yeah, I'm going to yeah. you. Love that. I love his jacket. His jacket's fucking sick. I want that jacket. He's a he's a hot he's guy, stylish boy. Yeah. Um. I love when he's walking to the uh, scene of the crime when the police chief has been attacked by the villain at the end. And everyone's like, no, you can't enter the scene. And the camera's like firmly on his back like a third person action game. And he's just like decking everyone in the... (laughs) Oh, man. This one was so much fucking fun. Yeah, I'm so glad I picked this. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. Um, so I think it's time to get into our recommendations. Um, I'll go first. I would give this film a strong recommend. Um, I've I've obviously talked about some of my uh, sort of social and political problems with this film. Um, however, I I think we've mentioned on this podcast before. There is like a I think there is a line that a film or a piece of art has to cross before it can truly start harming your ability to enjoy it, especially when the rest of the film is so damn enjoyable. Um, I also did get some stuff out of it narratively. I do agree with Josh, it is quite thin. But I do love that the central thread of the film is just sheer pain and torture. Um, And I think what really holds it together is an unending sympathy for the protagonist throughout. The film criticizes his actions, but I, I don't think the film ever feels like it's condemning our protagonist and i actually yeah. find it really refreshing in that way I think, I think to kind of riff off of you in that bit like one thing i did really like about this film in terms of like the performance and writing is there is a theme of like men repressing emotion yes and there's a thing at the end of the film where the villain's final victory is you can't get the revenge you want on me because i don't feel anything i it's... don't feel anything and 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 so this contrast of a guy who can't feel anything and that is like his whole deal and then someone else who won't let himself feel anything so that's yeah. a, that was a cool kind of mask slight slight masculinity uh deconstruction moment i think it's really i do think that there's something narratively terrifying about that moment as well of like mm. you can he can never win and mm. by this point you're really aligned with this character and you really fucking want him to have a meaningful victory over this piece of mm. shit and kind of the knowledge that he possibly never will is is genuinely scary or harrowing so yeah um i would strongly recommend this uh josh what about you i i'd give this um, a decent recommend i think it's a very good film obviously <laughs> yeah. um but i do i do think um I wish there was kind of more stuff happening with the characters that like the thirty percent of the film that was people kind of talking and saying, Where are you? Are you are you hunting down the villain? Yeah, I am. Oh, <laughs> stop doing that. No, I, I won't <laughs> stop doing that. Uh, you know, if that stuff was more entertaining, um, I think I'll give I could give it just a more wholehearted recommend, but I do think this is one of those films where like you you kind of are just waiting for the next cool violent action scene to happen. I and understand. It, it amazing. Yeah. Uh, when it is happening, I mean, it's like weird gender stuff happening or kind of just, yeah, kind of boring non character stuff happening. Um, but yeah, I, I overall, no, I did really like this film. I, I had a really good time. De- very decent recommend. Um, another thing interesting is I think there are assets that I don't know if there were direct references. I felt like they were references. Tell me if you, well, in the audience, to comment if you disagree. I thought when they found the ear, that was a reference to Blue Velvet by David Lynch. Interesting. And I thought there's a scene when the main character is choking someone out with a bag, the villain, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, which it was shot exactly the same way as one of the opening scenes in No Country for Old Men, where a character's being choked mm. out. Um, and I don't know if, if these are like, you know. Yeah poetic cinema moments <laughs> um, but I thought that was cool anyway I had a good time with this and I think there were discussions to be had about how men should approach uh, directing films like this um, yeah but also uh, I want more cool violent action films so uh, if we can do that and be a bit more work that'd be great but this is a great time and I, I recommend it awesome Alrighty, and what are we going to be talking about next week? Next week, we've got our 2020 boxes episode, October. Um, uh, Lovely. Lagging a bit behind. Um, and we're going to be reviewing Anime, Trauma, and Divorce by Open Mike Eagle. Wonderful. One of the best album titles I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you very much for listening. Um, We'll see you next time for our discussion of the albums and releases of October 2020, along with Anime, Trauma and Divorce by Open Mike Eagle. 
Thanks very much for listening. Bye. Oh, bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>